Hello everyone, I'm Will Terrell, and welcome to this video. <laughs> uh, this is People Sketching episode 14, uh, and I'm coloring a sketch of a fella I saw at uh, a burger joint at a convention last month. Um, not coloring it right now, of course. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought this guy really stood out. I mean, it was after a long day at a convention, and uh, we were in line at this burger joint, and it was a really long line. And I looked over, and I realized, wait a minute. <laughs> this guy has four cell phones. And at first, I noticed the two Bluetooth headsets, which I thought was strange at first. But then the four cell phones made it even better. And then he had the, like, phone holders all the way around his belt. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. And he, uh, he was sort of like dressed like an engineer with the, you know, the blue dress shirt and the pocket protector and the slacks and all that stuff. Um, uh, so I, uh, I snapped a picture of him and I drew him later. Um, <laughs> these are things you just can't make up. Like that's real life. This guy really dressed like that, you know, that anyways. So, uh, I'm just coloring it. I kind of had trouble coloring it. Um, I ended up going a little too dark, I think, towards the end. And part of it was because he was in a very dark room. You know, it was very, you know, it's a burger joint bar kind of thing. So, um, but, you know, I, I worked with it and pulled it out at the end. Uh, what I'm starting with this on this one is letting the uh, marker soak into the page. Uh, you'll notice... I do have two different variations when I use color markers. I'll either like just let the marker soak into the page and like just bleed out and then I let it dry and then I'll go back with another color and you know just layer it like that. Uh, or sometimes I'll color using negative shapes uh, where I'll just I'll color and leave the paper in certain spots where I want it to be lighter. Uh, yeah, it just depends on what I'm in the mood to do. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, the last people sketching video I did, um, I guess it was about a month ago, I talked about why artists don't get good feedback and it seemed to have gotten a really good response and I appreciate everybody that checked it out and shared it and, uh, left comments. Like I, honestly, I was afraid to put it up. Like I didn't think people were going to like it or they'd get upset that, <laughs> I don't know why. I just get self-conscious anytime I put something out there. Um, but yeah, thank you for all the wonderful responses on it. Um, I know how frustrating it can be as an artist to not get feedback from people. And so that's why I made the video. Um, and the other part is I get a lot of – it seems like anytime somebody friends me on Facebook or on DeviantArt, uh, like the first thing they do is message me asking me to look at their artwork and sometimes I just don't know what to say, like, because you fall into one of those categories uh, and there's like, all I can say is you need to draw, like you just need to draw, you need to fill up a whole sketchbook, you know, and, and then you can ask me questions, like you'll know what questions you need to ask. But usually like it's artists sending me just one or two sketches and wanting feedback on it. I'm like, I, that's not going to help you. <laughs> Uh, so I thought today I would make a video on uh, how to get good feedback on your work. Uh, so the last one is explaining why you didn't get it, and this is how to get it. Uh, and it, it can also be, I guess, classified is, as um, how to network because it follows into the same categories. Um, so, yeah, let's see how this goes. <laughs> So this is actually the beginning of um, comic convention season, and uh, pretty soon a lot of students will be graduating from high school or from college, and you're working on your portfolio. You're going to start showing it around. So hopefully this is good timing for this type of thing. Um, but what I wanted to start with was talking about um, – I want to put you in the mindset of who you're getting feedback from. Uh, you could be getting feedback from a teacher. Or you could be getting feedback from an editor at a comic book company or a publisher. Uh, or you could be getting feedback from an art director or um, just other artists that are already established in the career that you're wanting to pursue. Um, <clears throat> I want to put you in their chair for just a few minutes so you can see what it is 
they're reacting to or not reacting to when they when you try to show them your portfolio. So uh, I know for a comic book, for example, <laughs> I learned this the hard way. Um, I remember my first comic book was in San Diego Comic Con in '97, and we printed up uh, like a full size comic book, black and white, 16 pages, and spent like a thousand dollars printing it, and uh, couldn't sell any of them. Uh, and I sat in on a panel for Image Comics, and this is when they – it was like their first um, string of um, submissions, I guess, from people that weren't the original Image cl- uh, creators. Um, and they were looking for collaborators to submit their own story ideas that could possibly be published by Image. Uh, and I sat in on this panel. I was like, oh, yeah, I could do that. I'm a, I'm a creator. I created my own comic book. I've got something to show them. Uh <laughs> And I went up to the table, the image booth, uh, after the panel and uh, proudly hand my book over to um, Jim Valentino and, uh, Valentino and was like, hey, I saw your panel and uh, I've got a comic book here and, you know, this is a perfect time for me to submit it. And he's like, oh, OK, thanks, <laughs> which I wasn't really following the rules like they had said to fill out an application and submit like there's a whole submission process, not just walk up to the booth and hand him a book. Uh, but I thought, you know, I was special. <laughs> the rules don't apply to me. Um, so anyways, he grabs the book and he's like, thanks. And he ta- he pulls out this box. And the box is literally like four or five feet tall. Really big box. I mean, it substantial. He takes my, bo- my book and he tosses it on the top of a pile of comic books that he'd gotten just that day alone. And... I'm looking back on it. This is not a box that he's going to take home with him. <laughs> this is the this is the uh, bin that was going to get left behind in the trash. <laughs> Probably, I don't know that for sure, but um, that, that says something. Like just that one convention, he got enough uh, books to fill up an entire box like that um, in just like one one day. Not even the entire weekend. I mean, it was that. Uh, and a lot of publishers are like that. They get so many submissions that it could fill up an entire box very quickly. And um, you you start it starts to turn into noise after a while. Like you don't even stand out. <clears throat> and you and it's a really bad time for you to try to submit work to somebody in that situation, like at a convention, uh, because you're just gonna get lost in the crowd. And I've seen the same thing with portfolio reviews where, you know, you've got a line of 30, 40 artists lined up to get a review from Marvel Comics or DC Comics or even some indie publisher. And you go through that whole line, and by the time they get to you, they've already seen hundreds of submissions that weekend. Uh, And they're worn out. They're exhausted. They're tired of the same questions. They're tired of the same egos. They're tired of the same people thinking that the rules that don't apply to them. (laughs) Uh, And... So, you, like, the longer the weekend goes on, the worse your feedback is going to get. <laughs> and it's not because they're jerks. It just – it's exhausting. And I've had that experience too. Like, just – I've I've looked at so many portfolios at a show before or by the end, I just didn't have it in me to, to be nice. Uh, and usually I have to walk away at that point because I'd rather – not say anything than be rude you know and it's not because i'm trying to be jerk a jerk it's just tired (laughs) so this is rule number one for how to get good feedback at shows don't assume the worst um sometimes you'll catch somebody on an off day Uh, sometimes you'll catch them after they've just been exhausted from talking to so many people uh and sometimes you just you don't know how you're coming off to them uh, and so you, maybe you just rub them the wrong way and, you know, there's it's just in the air or something. Uh, so, but don't assume the worst because you might run into that same person the next day or, or a month later at a different e- event and they're perfectly glad to meet you and perfectly glad to talk about you. So don't assume the worst about each situation. I, and I remember um, Scott Kurtz, he does a webcomic called PVP talking about meeting uh, Jeff Smith at a comic convention. <laughs> And Jeff Smith, I've met him several times, and he's like one of the nicest guys in the world. Uh, and apparently, when uh, Scott Kurtz met him, he waited in line, gets to the front of the line to show him his book. And he's like, "I want to do comics. You know, how do I do it?" And Jeff's like, "I, I can't. I can't tell you. Go away. You know, 
I, I don't know the exact situation, but Scott walked away from it uh, pretty upset about the whole encounter. Uh, and I've had encounters like that, too, on both sides of the table where I met somebody and they were really rude uh, when everybody else thinks they're the nicest person in the world. And I've been that person where I just ex- – I'm exhausted and I'll have the nice – you know, I don't have the personality anymore. I've just been drained of it from talking to thousands of people over an event. So don't assume the worst about people. <laughs> this guy has so many phones. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that uh, this guy having so many phones would be appropriate for a, a networking video. <laughs> He's fully connected. Uh, my friend Brayden gave me the idea for the name for the video for this uh, multicellular <laughs> that's perfect um so anyways what was i talking about and you also have to remember that um just because somebody can draw doesn't mean they can teach so a lot of times when you aren't getting good feedback at an event uh it's not because uh it's not because they don't want to help you. It's that uh, it's hard to communicate what it is that an artist needs in order to level up. Um, so, like when you approach somebody to get critiques or get feedback, be aware of that. That um, it's they're not always skilled in that area, if that makes sense. Uh, so don't assume the worst, and then not everybody can teach. <laughs> uh, so those are two things to keep in mind. And then um, going back to putting putting you in the mindset of somebody that's giving a critique, like an art director or someone like that, um, when you're in the position to give somebody a job, it can start to feel like everybody wants something from you, uh, and it's very uncomfortable. Um I mean, it feels like it feels uncomfortable no matter what situation you are in uh, or who you are when people just want something from you. And most everybody has been through that process of learning. Uh, and so um, they they have they feel almost a sense of obligation to share, to give back to because somebody was patient with them. Somebody gave them feedback when they needed it. Um, so there is a, a sort of sense of obligation or even a desire to want to give back to the next generation and help them get the skills they need to succeed. Um, but there's a fine line, um, and it, that, that line has to do with your expectations. If you feel like you're entitled to a critique or to feedback or uh, even to a job, uh, that's a red flag right there. Um, and it, you're almost guaranteed to not get feedback. In fact, that's usually the only – I've said this before in my videos. That's usually the only type of email that I don't respond to is if somebody um, is almost seems entitled to a response from me uh, or a critique from me. And uh, this is not my job. I, I will happily give feedback and critique to people, and I do on a regular basis. Uh, but as soon as somebody feels entitled to it, I don't respond to that at all, <laughs> and I've always been like that. It's just now when I get uh, hundreds of emails and comments a day, uh, I really can't afford the time to uh, to give to that. And I guess that's that's really what it, you have to have to get good feedback is you have to respect the other person's time. You have to realize that their time is valuable. Like you're not just taking – five minutes of their time now it's five minutes of their time plus the lifetime of experience that's made them the person that they are that's given them the skill set in order to put them in the job to be able to give you a job or to give you the critique to help you get work that person has worked their entire life to get that skill set and so for you to take five minutes of their time or 10 minutes of their time that's a lot that is worth a lot not just in money but in in attention because they could give that time to somebody else and just pass you by and that's the thing for me is i will give pretty much everybody feedback but all feedback is not created equal <laughs> there are some people i will give considerably better feedback to than others 
and it has a lot to do with how much it feels like they respect my time and my experience um, and how much they put into using the advice that I give them because I've had I've had students in my career where I've taught them and then they'll come back six months later with the exact same sketchbook with maybe one or two drawings in it wanting me to give them new feedback just because they're feeling inspired again or looking for inspiration my job is not to get you inspired <clears throat> my job is just to demonstrate that being an artist is possible and sometimes give you feedback on how to make it possible for yourself but if you're not willing to put in the work but you keep coming back to me for advice that's a waste of my time that I could be giving to somebody else that works really really hard for just the little crumbs of advice that they get from people they respect everything that they get and that makes a big difference I know that my time is going to be worth something to them and they're going to do something with it and use it even if I don't see the result or get any benefit from it I want it to be utilized I want somebody to get benefit of it uh, and if that means passing it on down the road then I'm okay with that I just I like to teach and I like to encourage but I don't want it I don't want it to be taken for granted if that makes sense <laughs> and it's it's hard to know the difference uh, a lot of a lot of artists are just looking for approval they just want people it, it, it kind of it's it's like a kid in school it's like they do a drawing and they're like what do you think of this they just want people to like what they're doing they just want to be acknowledged that they exist and that's not necessarily helpful to you like the best feedback I can give an artist is when I look over an entire body of work over an entire sketchbook or an entire portfolio that they've worked on for months intensively and I can look at the patterns that they're doing over a long period of time and say here's a mistake that you keep repeating work on that or I like this this little strength that you have that I'm seeing in every single one of your drawings you need to focus on that and not these other things I can look at patterns and help encourage those things but looking at one drawing doesn't do either of us any good um, <laughs> one of my greatest teachers is an artist named Brian Stelfreeze uh, and if you ever get a chance to get a critique or feedback from him he's amazing but one of my favorite things that he would do is he'd look at my portfolio and he'd say something like uh, you see this thing you're doing right here you're making me mad <laughs> like you know like I'd be drawing I'd be I'd not be drawing hands all the characters have hands behind their back or in their pockets or just off panel you never see their hands and he's like stop doing that stop doing that and he turned the page and there's another page with characters with no hands and he's like oh. and he would get irritated like like I could have gone back and fixed that page in the last 30 seconds <laughs> And he would just go through the entire portfolio and he's like, you're making me mad. You're pissing me off. You need to do, <laughs> stop doing this. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's, he's pretty awesome. But um, yeah, that's the kind of feedback you need as an artist is over an entire body of work, not over just a handful of drawings. When I'm coaching an artist on getting portfolio reviews at a convention or something along those lines. One of the things I tell them to do is have a notebook, uh, just like a small spiral notebook that you can write notes on when somebody gives you a critique on your portfolio. Never make excuses for your work. When, when you're showing your portfolio, that is game day. Like there's no explaining why you didn't get the home run. There's no explaining why, you know, you weren't able to keep up. Um, when you're at game day, there are no excuses. You, you come to the table with what you have, and then you learn from it. If you, if you don't get the job, then you write down the notes of, of the things they tell you you need to work on. What's wrong with this portfolio? What's wrong with your drawing skills? What, what you need to improve on? You take those things, and you, you collect them all into a notebook, and then you take them home, and you work on them later. No excuses. Um, and that shows a, a high level of respect when you're not there to explain away why your drawings weren't good like oh I had a bad day that day or that's not my best drawing don't put your bad drawings in there only put your best stuff um, what don't waste their time <laughs> and don't it's like saying uh, you know oh, this is my portfolio but don't look at that one it kind of stinks well 
uh, why do, why should I even look like sometimes I'll even fold up the portfolio and hand it back to him and say, well, I don't want to see it then. Usually it's just jokingly, but you know, it's a, along the lines of, ew, gross, smell this. And then you show it to me. I'm like, I don't want to smell this. That's disgusting. <laughs> um, so yeah, only bring your best stuff. Don't make excuses and take notes. Uh, and then now here's, here's the real magic to networking. Uh, the magic rule for networking and for getting good feedback. And this is a hard one to teach. And this goes into every aspect of your life, not just with, you know, getting a job or, or, or portfolio review. <clears throat> it's creating value for other people. And you can do that in every conversation that you have with somebody. Uh, and I can tell you that every time you go up to an editor at a convention – They've already talked to like 100 people and they've already had the same exact conversations and they're already getting tired of hearing it all. Uh, and so if you come up there just the you know 101st person in line to say, hey, this is my portfolio. Um, I worked really hard on it. I, I was wondering if you could give me a feedback and tell me you know what you think and if, may, you know, if it's possible for me to get a job. They've already heard that so many times and they're sick of it. Um, if you can do something different, if you can actually create value the moment you meet them, they will appreciate that. And they will give you an extra five minutes or ten minutes. Or they'll even give you your business card and, and let you email them later to get you know feedback a month or two later after you've shown them, you know, after you've gone home and taken your taken their notes and done something with them, improved your portfolio, you can show them the results later on. So how do you create that value the minute you meet them? Part of it is just being interested in them, being excited about what they do, who they are, what their passions are. Like everybody loves to talk about themselves. <laughs> everybody. Um, it's just most people are too self-involved to talk about somebody else. <laughs> They're like, look at my portfolio. Look what I'm doing. Tell me how to improve. You know, those are all me questions. Those have nothing to do with them. You're going to them almost for approval for what you're doing. And that's a one-sided relationship. And a lot of people do that in every one of their relationships in their lives. It's it's me, 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 me. Look what I'm doing. Here's here's the game I'm playing. Here's here's what I want to do. You know, and it's always talking about you. It's all it's you're you're breathing in all of their energy. You're sucking it in. <laughs> And uh, it's unbalanced. And so you people will give a little bit, but it's like they have this certain amount of essence within them and they can only share so much before they're drained and they can't take it anymore. So if you come up to their table and you actually give something to them, give them energy, give them excitement about what they're doing, that goes a long way. You're, you're actually recharging them a little bit just by your presence. And that's so rare that... They will appreciate that, and they'll they'll happily give you feedback. Um, the trick is, you have to be authentic, and authenticity is something that I think a lot of people aren't even aware of. Um, we're just trying to survive, you know. We're trying to <laughs> just reach our goals and try and stay above water and all those things and we're not really aware of how we're perceived by other people let alone if it's authentic or not and it's such a complicated concept to even explain what authenticity is but essentially it's it's showing appreciation to somebody without wanting anything in return which is complicated if you're wanting to get a you know feedback from somebody <laughs> Um, so yeah, if somebody, if you come up to somebody and you're sort of flattering them, like, oh, I love what you do. You're so good. You're, you're amazing. They'll appreciate that a little bit. Um, but if it feels like it's not genuine, if it's not authentic, it feels creepy. It's like they're buttering you up for something. Um, <laughs> and how do you not do that? <laughs> um, and I think part of it is you're not just appreciating what somebody did or what somebody could do. 
you're appreciating who they are right now. It's being in the moment. And it's asking a different type of question than, uh, I love that book that you did, or I love that movie that you worked on, or I love that, you know, those types of things. Those, I mean, people always like talking about what they did, but the questions I think that are show that are more authentic is asking, why do you do what you do? You know, what what it is what is it that you're passionate about? What is it that you strive for in in the way that you produce art or write or or any of these types of things? You ask questions like genuine questions that you really, really want to know, that that's in your heart, that you want to know about your own work, that you can ask this other person. They're probably they probably have asked this question themselves or or have wondered about the question, but they've never been verbalized it until you ask it. And I've, I love asking those types of questions of people, of people I I really admire, but also everybody I meet, like uh, from complete new, you know, beginners all the way up to people, you know, that are retired from doing the thing that they've loved, that they did their entire life. Everybody has a story and everybody has a reason for their story. And those are the type of things I like to understand and, and really dig into and, and get excited about. Um, and if you can do that to somebody without being creepy, <laughs> and it'll take practice, I promise. Uh, and you can practice on, you know, your grandmother or your your parents or your teacher or, you know, just whoever, people in your everyday life, just ask them, what what do they get excited about? What are they passionate about? What is something that they want to do you know that they strive for in in their everyday life you know the questions like that that and uh, ask them of everybody so that when you finally go to ask the editor or the art director or the professional artist or the writer or or whoever it is you're trying to network with when you finally go ask them it doesn't feel uh, you know like it's not genuine because you've already asked that question a hundred times of people that you already care about and part of this is like i said you're not just it's not just me 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 it's us we relate to each other on a human level it's a balanced relationship um so yeah and i've when i when i was getting portfolio critiques at conventions what i would do is (laughs) i would have my comic book like the already finished comic book this is after that first convention where i learned the hard way of how not to network. Uh, I started um, keeping my comic book with me whenever I go to ta- table to table to meet other artists or meet publishers or whatever, and I wouldn't go for a critique. It seems counterintuitive, but I wasn't there for a critique. I was there to learn. And so I would take my sketchbook and I would take my comic book, whatever it was I was working on, and I would just hold it so it's facing out. And it's something that nobody's seen on the market really um or like my uh for recently when i'm doing portfolio um critiques and stuff i would have my portfolio with me uh and it have a picture on the front of the portfolio something eye-catching or something like that and i would just go table to table and i would talk to people and i'm not there necessarily to get a critique i'm there to learn uh because every person uh at that convention, at every single convention I've ever been to, has every person has at least one thing that I can learn something from. And I learned that in the process of being excited about what they're doing, being excited about what they're excited about. And nine times out of ten, somewhere in the conversation, they would have some they would enjoy the conversation enough to say, So what do you do? And I would show them oh, I I am a storyboard artist too, or I'm a comic book artist. This is a book I've been working on and they are, they, because I've given them more than enough already. They're like, well, can I have take a look? And cause they've been getting that, you know, they've been getting people to ask to see their portfolio all weekend long. Uh, so finally they get a chance to say, well, can I take a look? And then you, they take my book and they look through it and they like, Oh, this is nice. I like where you did this and this and this. And you know, they give me a critique on how to step it up. And a lot of times they would give me their business card and say, Hey, you know, uh, show me what you got a month from now or two months from now and, and stay in touch and that, that type of thing. 
Uh, and so it became a networking opportunity instead of just a portfolio review. And that, that's, that comes from being genuine and doing my best to seem authentic and giving more than I got. And the thing is with when you give more than you receive from somebody else, you will never <laughs> – you will always get more in return. Like the more you give, the more you get. Uh, and that's that's a balance that you're always you always need to keep. And you can do this online too. Like I um, and I, I recommend you don't just set your sights on like people that have like award winning books and uh, you know they're or movie directors or, or like artists like big name artists or anything like that. Just start with everyday people like other artists that are at your level encourage them like comment on their artwork say this is what i like about your stuff this is good and the more you give the more they'll give back and uh it's not always going to be from the person that you that you give feedback to or encouragement to it's it but the more you put it out there the more people start to see that you're the type of person that gives first uh and you start to see yourself that way too as a person that just gives and gives and gives um yeah, I mean, like, if you if you're wanting to get good feedback or or uh, higher number of followers on whatever social media thing you're on, that's the way to do it is to be encouraging of others first, because um, there's enough of that me 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 out there already, uh, and everybody tunes it out now. Like they're just sick of it. <laughs> Uh, oh, you're on the me channel. Oh, sorry, not interested. <laughs> or uh, you probably know what I'm talking about. And I this this goes so much deeper than just getting critiques and feedback as an artist. I mean, this is life. You know, like if you if you're looking for friends, if you're looking for love and relationships, this is how you do it. It's not me, me, me. It's you give first. You be genuine. You be encouraging. You be abundant in all those areas, uh, and you'll get it back in return. And I guess I'd heard somewhere the there's a naive definition of love, which says, "I love because I'm loved. I love all my friends because they love me, and so I'm looking out for them because they look out for me." And that's how love works. That's one way that love works. But you're always keeping score. Because if somebody wounds you, you have to wound them back. Or you have to run away from them. Or something. And there's always a deficit. You never have enough love. Where the mature definition of love says, I am loved because I love. I give it first to every person I meet, whether they want it or not, whether they give it back or not. That's not why I love. I love because that's what I'm made to do. And you'll start to find that what happens is the more you give, the more you get. The more love you give, the more you get from everyone, every, every direction. And you could be thinking... Well, people hurt me. You know, what do I do about that? Should I love those people? I mean, yes, you should love them. Doesn't mean you have to be around them. <laughs> uh, but... <laughs> and I'd say, you know, I, I definitely focus... I mean, I love every person I meet. I try to, at least. Um... And I try not to be judgmental about it. Um, but there's some people that I would rather surround myself with than others. Um, and it's that whole, you know, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. <laughs> uh, so I try to surround myself with people that are loving and that are passionate and are driven and are trying to do something with their lives. It doesn't mean I don't love those people. It just means... I've come to a place in my life where um, I choose to not hate other people, which is basically just giving that energy to someone else. I mean, the more you spend, 
more time you spend focused on hating others, the more you're not spending it loving yourself or loving those around you. You know, it's wasted energy. It was really hard for me to get to that place, though. You know, I don't expect anybody to just jump into not hating. <laughs> uh, there's so many reasons to hate other people. <laughs> I mean, they really make it so easy. Uh, <laughs> but I don't know. I think it's just... I, I feel like now that... Um, I was unlovable at some point in my life and there were some people out there that still loved me anyways um, and if those people hadn't been out there I don't know where I would be and so I've kind of, I've kind of come to the place where I believe that we're all learning to be better people it's just some of us don't realize it yet I had this this dream uh, a few weeks back when I started thinking about this video, and um, in the dream, it was in this dark valley, and um, you could see people with uh, you could see a light, like it wasn't me, but I saw somebody next to a fire, and they were alone, you know maybe two or three people nearby but it was a very small fire and they were by themselves and off in the distance you could see another small fire like way way out there and another one up on a hill over there and another one you know deeper in the valley that way and this person by the fire was thinking well I think that's Joe over there so I can love him because he loves me and then that one up on the hill, that's my ex-girlfriend. But I still love her because she still loves me, kind of. So, you know, I can be nice to her. And then that one way down in the valley, that that's my cousin. And uh, so we got each other's back, you know. But we don't talk that often. And that's what it feels like. Like, it's this dark valley where these are the people that you can trust. And those are the only lights that you see. And then at the same time in the stream, I was walking through the valley, lighting people's torches as I went. I'd see people and their torch had gone out and give them a little love. And that person, I hear them in the darkness. Oh, here's a little love. Here's a little love. Here's a little love. And every person I met suddenly had a little light. And you bring them together to be bright. And we could see each other. And it wasn't lonely. It wasn't this dark place that, that everyone was used to. And you think about it. It's like, am I going to run out of love? <laughs> am I going to run out of, of light? Uh, I mean, even if my light did go out, I've lit all these other people's flames. And maybe there's a chance that at least one of them will give it back. <laughs> um and that's how I see it. That's how I see loving other people is it's it's not I'm not doing it because they did something for me. I'm just doing it cuz I've got love to give. <laughs> and every person I run across, you know, could use a little bit even if they've already got some. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a cool dream. So, networking. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's uh that's how to network. It really is. Uh, you're not trying to get something from every person you meet. You're trying to learn something from every person you meet. And you're trying to um, give first. Because we all appreciate when somebody else is interested in what we're passionate about. We all appreciate when somebody is excited about us. And we all want to give it back when it's given to us. So if you give it first, it goes a long way. This really has nothing to do with <laughs> portfolio reviews, does it? Uh, as far as portfolio reviews go, 
put your best stuff in there. Don't make excuses. Try to have fun, you know, and get as many critiques as you can over a long period of time. You know, keep updating your portfolio and yeah, be a blessing. <laughs> Give value first. So uh, that's pretty much it for this video. <laughs> this the guy with his phones who's doing clearly a ton of networking. Uh, yeah. Anyways, I hope you liked this video. I hope it was helpful. And uh, thanks for watching. And you guys keep smiling. <laughs>